So what does constitute a major fire in San Francisco? Well, this morning, that was it. From the people that saw this at the very beginning, we're lobbing water with not a tremendous amount of pressure. It's because we exceeded all the hydrants. So we started using our high pressure system. We used our Jones Street tank. Then we went up to our Ashbury Street tank. And now we're flowing water all the way from Twin Peaks all the way down here. So we got 100 million gallons going. How often do you hit the capacity of the neighborhood hydrants like you did today? So that's very, uh, it's very sparse. So uh, we had the, four, the um, Pier 45 fire. We definitely had to use all the aspects that we uh, implemented today. Uh, and prior to that, uh, the last time was probably the Mission Bay fire, and if not the Cannery fire uh, in Fisherman's Wharf before that. Now we have had some fires in the Mission District where it um, was beneficial for us to use the high pressure hydrants uh, just out of uh, location. Uh, not necessarily out of capacity. I'm thinking back to the Mission Bay fire. I know that day taxed your resources. We were talking a little bit today about what a major fire is, and that's when you're really drawing on all the folks who are active that day. Yeah, so we, we are very fortunate in San Francisco to have a fully staffed uh, fire department 24-7. Um, um, out of our 300 plus firefighters on duty, uh, our 45 uh, fire engines and our 20 truck companies that we have, uh, we can go up to a tenth alarm. And once we get to a tenth alarm, that's when we would have to look at aspects such as mutual aid, uh, which, uh, you know, knock on wood, has never happened for the city and county of San Francisco. Um, but going to a fifth alarm fire, that taxes half of our city resources. Uh, and we have a system in place to move resources. So if you live in the Soma or Mission District, no, you did not not have apparatus. What we do is we will pull apparatus from neighboring uh, areas. We still have our normal medical emergencies, our normal fires. If you see on our, on our social media account, you can see during this incident, we had a couple of grass fires, a couple of rescues that occurred. We're still responding to those within a uh, very uh, dedicated and quick response time to ensure that the public does not get a lower level of care or response just because of this fire. Uh, and with the water aspect, uh, having to go to that that pumping system, you're using different ones today. Yes. And you were talking about how you got to switch between them. They're literally someone throwing a lever and the, the pressure's going up and down. Yeah, so we work very uh, closely with the uh, PUC and the water department. Um, and we actually have a great relationship where they respond to our great alarm fires. So we have a liaison right on site. In addition to that, we have a dedicated uh, water officer, water supply officer for our department that works very closely with the water department to ensure that all aspects of this is working properly. This is a disaster preparedness system. This is a system that we are going to need when we have a major disaster. This is a small disaster. And as you can see in this small disaster, all the, the uh, components that are required to get the water to come down to the system efficiently. I, we were talking about the, the, the study on how many fires you come out with with a magnitude seven earthquake, and it's, it's this and a bunch of, bunch of places around town. Yeah, so the, the, the thought process is that when, when we have the next major earthquake, we can theoretically have well over 100 fires of this size right off the bat immediately off the bat and again this is the city prides itself on being prepared and being resilient and we have systems in place to supplement that we have our fire reserves we have our NERTs we have our fire, our police department alert program where we have citizen volunteers who are trained to go out and be able to bring back intel to our fire battalion stations on what fire needs to be addressed now you know, what what fire is posing the biggest threat to uh, the biggest population of life safety. Well, today, today a good lesson in, in just how hard it can be to fight one big fire. Absolutely, and I think we all saw the dedication from all public servants, from fire department, paramedics, and law enforcement on how we have to work collectively to maintain the safety of the public while we're fighting this fire and to get a containment on this fire. Uh, and again, this is just a, a farce reminder that in uh, a vertical city uh, of a lot of wood structures, uh, we are not immune to uh, disasters. And again, when we do have the next major disaster, this is something that we will use to learn to build upon to ensure your safety.